Well, here we go, everybody. I'm excited, and I'm going to be talking to you about the dynamic laws of the universe to manifest. You know, the dynamic laws. I, I, I love that word dynamic because it's really like dynamite. And I just want to break it down so you will understand that no matter what situation you might find yourself in right now, that you are a powerful manifester. You have power and there are fixed laws waiting for you to tap into them. So, so many people are praying to God, but there's a verse in the Bible that says, the heavens belong to God, but the earth God has given to man. And so I'm going to share with you just what some of those dynamic universal laws are. We know that laws are fixed. That means the law of gravity cannot be changed. If you throw something up in the air, it's going to come to, down. Um, the law of, of uh, is it aerodynamics? I, I can't remember. But that's the reason why airplanes fly. But there are universal laws that are just waiting for you to tap into it. But you know, I got to give you my little speak that I always give you. So if something is not happening in your life, it's not God. It, it, it's not because uh, you, you did something wrong. It's because you have not aligned or tapped into the universal laws that are waiting for you. You know, I love it because God loves us so much. He gives us laws that work, you know, that help us to be successful. So you've heard me say this a hundred times, but God wants your joy to be full. God wants you to be happy. Somebody asked me, is that God's desire or, or mine? Well, if it's good, God put that desire on the inside of you. So what would make you happy? What would bring joy in your life? What would make your life great? Would it be to live more purposeful? Would it be to be more compassionate? You know, I, I went to the gym today and uh, this lady was coming forward and I was coming the other way. And, and I put my blinker on to turn into the parking space and she got frustrated. And I just pulled over and I let down my window. And I said, my dear, you can have that parking space. I said, my life is so great and blessed that a parking, sp a parking space is insignificant to me. I said, besides that, I see this as an opportunity for me to get more steps in. And she was like, oh, no, no. I said, no, you go ahead and have it. Why? Because I wanted my joy to be full. And in the scheme of life, a parking space means nothing to me. So what would bring joy? What would bring bliss? Like Gabriel and Kylie said last week, what would make your life blissful? Because it's not just about material things. It's about living your purpose, uh, walking fully in your destiny, serving others, etc. But, but, what what would make you really just be grateful and be able to make a contribution to the world? So, so that's what we're talking about when I say universal laws. So you decide what you want. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so that's the first pillar that I want to share. And, and so... If things are not happening, the whole purpose of this show 
is really for you to understand how to tap into that abundance. You know, somebody uh, said to me, and, you know, I'm not judging anybody, the Kardashians, you know, but two sisters are billionaires. And, and, and I know there's a lot there. But this person said, I'm struggling to pay my electric bill. And I said to her, my question to you would be, what universal laws with your thinking, with your beliefs, with your focus, with your words, could you begin to shift and change? Maybe to not bring billions in your life initially. Because life is more than money and material things. And she realized that she had been spending a lot of her time focusing in on uh, what she didn't have. And we know, hey, that's a universal uh, dynamic, universal law, right? When you focus in on what you do not have, you're going to get more of that. I love it what Neil Donald Walsh says. He said, God always says yes. He said, if you say, I don't have any money, God says yes. Yes, you don't. <laughs> or, or if you say, you know, I'm just tired of, of just the way things are. He said, God says yes. Yes, you are. Or if you say, I want more love and I'm just sick and tired of being. So you see how just living in those vibrations, like the young lady who was talking about, she couldn't pay her bills. I said, there are dynamic universal laws that if you tap into them, that your life will begin to shift and change. And boy, she's doing that. So let me just break it down before I get to some of those laws. This is how the universe is made. So, so, so we know what? That it is the desire and the will of God or the universe. Do you believe that the universe is a friendly universe? That's important. That's what Einstein said. So let me talk a little bit about the manifestation formula before I give you some of those laws. I believe that we got the formula mixed up. It's be, have, and then do. So I see be as that, that 4D world, the spiritual world where all things exist, that quantum world where all possibilities are. I see that, that be our being, which is our spirit as perfect seeking first the kingdom of God. I see our being as that invisible world, that perfect world. Some people call it the vortex, that four dimension where angels dis, uh, 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 are. I got that out. So our being is perfect and possesses all things already. All right, that's the structure of the universe. That's where God's spirit, you know, universal laws are. Okay, so we know, you. we've heard people say, you attract from your place of being. You attract who you are, not what you want. So being in all of us is perfect and ready. And in our being spiritually, we already have all things. You know, the Bible says God has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In our being world, because we're body, soul, and spirit, that's our spiritual world. In that world are all possibilities. Everything is already done. But this is where I believe that I'm really called to help people. Or we could call it body, soul, and spirit is having. So it's be, have, and do. Most people say be, do, and have. No, you be it first. You tap into that spiritual world. And then you have it. So th 
having, how do you have something? Having is deciding what you want. It's where you begin to become pregnant with that desire because you are embodying it. You are aligning with what your desire is. We know if you want, uh, if you want um, a new six bedroom house in the spiritual realm, that already exists. And kind of like uh, Gabriel, if you hadn't heard Gabriel and Kylie on attracting love from last week on how to use the, uh, you know, that power, that other powerful law, um, um, the law of attraction and all of that, you need to go back and listen to it. And, and, and so when you decide, well, I want a six bedroom house and maybe you don't have the money or the credit or whatever, this having place, we be, we have it on the inside of us. To me, that's the place of coherence. So you, you decide about a desire, but then you have to incubate it, embody it align it with the three, with the 4D world. Th th this is the stage where we change our beliefs. We stop wanting and needing, and we start feeling this is who I am, and this is what I have. We know that everything already exists where in that spiritual world, and just because you you have not or you are not experiencing it does not mean that it doesn't exist. So this is where we begin to change our thoughts, our words, what our imagination. This is where we become really pregnant. We embody. We say this is this is who I am, and this is what I have. And, 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 and I think this is where people really get frustrated because many times they don't realize that uh, the affirmations that you're speaking, I love what Gabriel said last week, you're not using your affirmations to make something happen. You're using your affirmation because you already know it. You're pregnant with it. You've embodied it. And um, to support the truth that you know on the inside, this is who I am. Another way I can put it would be to support your I amness. I am abundant. So when you know that, when, when your thinking and your subconscious or your heart are coherent and they're in agreement with that, your affirmations, your visualizations, your words are not really to make it happen, but to support what you already know. Because a lot of people uh, 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 are saying, I am abundant, but in their heart and in their subconscious, they have not taken the time to become pregnant, to embody it, to align with it. So imagination helps you to embody. I am abundant. I, you know, I, I am a, a, a owner of a six bedroom home. So that's where you do your, your meditation. All of those things, meditation, visualization, um, using affirmation is just to really bring uh, a strong, firm, resolute belief that this is who I am and this is what I have. And man, when you know that, the ball game is over because you're doing will come from a place of being, having, and then you do. And I personally believe that sometimes we take action too quickly. We, we take it too quickly. So in that having stage 
are in that soulish area because, you know, we're spirit. That's the first one I talked about. And then we're soul. What is our soul? Our soul is our emotions, our feelings. That's where our subconscious is. Uh, that's where our emotions are. That's where our mindset is, paradigms and all of that. So, so, so once we decide what we want and, and we get our soul or our having, and like Gabriel said last week, we accept that this is who I am and this is what I have. You know, the Bible talks about lay hold of anything. If you lay hold of anything, then your joy will be full and manifestation will not will come into your life. So y'all understand that I had to share that. I know there was a little technical, but you understand in the spirit realm, everything exists, all things are there, all possibilities exist. It's the perfect world that spirit is in you. Uh, it's, it's the fourth dimension, it's the vortex, it's angels, purpose and destiny, etc. So it's be, have, and then do. In your soulish realm or the having realm or the acceptance realm is, is where you become pregnant with that de de desire. You embody it. This is who I am. You align with it, with your thinking, your feelings, and your emotions. That's a process. It don't have to take long. Um, you're not needing or begging. You have it. You're becoming pregnant with it. Uh, you are incubating that idea, that concept, et cetera. I got that out. You're merely choosing what you want in that gigantic sea of infinite possibilities. You're saying, this is what I want, and you're calling it forth because you know it with your thoughts, with your words, uh, with your visualizations, with your affirmations, and anything else that you do. Those tools are just to support what you know. And I believe that knowing and embodying and becoming resolute in your I amness, this is who I am, and this is what I have, actually comes from stillness. Uh, and boy, when you when you know it, when you when you're pregnant with it, when you embody it, when you become re resolute, as I said, the game is over. And then from that place, you do. So I want you to take a deep breath in and uh, I want you to let that sink in. That was a lot. And now I'm going to talk about the powerful universal laws, the dynamic universal laws for manifestation that you, you, once you know what you want and you've embodied it and you have been taking action. I'm going to give you just some quick dynamic laws that will really help you. Let's take a deep breath in, everybody. Here I go. Well, here we go, everybody. I'm going to give you, I think it's eight dynamic universal laws that if you tap into them and start practicing them every day and include them in your life, like, like I tell my uh, clients, you won't recognize your life because God created universal laws for us to get in the flow of success and well-being and happiness and joy and abundance. So here we go. I hope I have time. Okay. The law of oneness. We're talking about these dynamic universal laws for, for manifestation. So the law of oneness simply means that you're one with God, one with spirit, one with the universe, and one with all of the good that there is in the world. You know, I love what Dr. Wayne Dyer uh, said. He, he would say, 
the biggest lie that we've been told is that we're separate from God. So what is God or spirit? Good, love, uh, positiveness, abundance, joy. So if you are one with God or one with the universe or one with good, I always say that I am seamless oneness with God. You know, if you have a seam in something, you can see it. But I said, I'm seeing less oneness with God and that I'm one with God or I'm one with good and one with all there is. So what would happen in your life every single day if you said that, if you thought that, if you lived in that? So when lack would show up in your life, are you one with good and one with God in abundance? That would really what? Encourage you and give you hope. So, so that dynamic universal law is the law of oneness. So I want to talk about the law of inspired action. And, you know, I love this law and not the law of action, but the law of uh, inspired action. And we know inspired means in spirit. So that means that you are taking inspired action because you, you've, some people say, I've heard the voice of God, or I got a hunch or, or in your intuition, you felt like, wow, I should take this action. And, and what I really want all of you to do is not take action to try to coerce push, shove, and make something happen. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said that we have million dollar ideas coming uh, into our lives all of the time, but we're not aware of them. So a great example of this would be uh, the, the, the inventor or the founder of the YouVersion Bible app. So it was my understanding that he created, he wanted everybody to be able to read the Bible. And so initially he just had it on, on the website. And of course he, he did not get the following. He did not get uh, just the, the, um, the response because he had, he and other people had put so much work, time, effort, and money into it. But, you know, he became discouraged because not a lot of people were really reading it. And his intention was really great. So he said, well, you know, let me just give this thing up. And then one day, I, I, I don't know if it was during the day or at night, but he was sitting in stillness and he got the download. Why not do, uh, it was kind of back in the day, a version Bible app so that when people put it on their phones, I think this is just when iPhones really came out that they could just read the Bible when they, whenever they wanted to. So see, he had tried everything that he could with taking regular action. Anybody ever been there? Let me put both of my hands up. But when he got the Bible app, I think the first day, and of course, you know, it took a lot of time and effort, but the first day that it launched, I think he got like, they were expecting 80,000. He got 83,000. Now that you version Bible app, has over 300 million people who've downloaded it on their device. Inspired action, in spirit action, God is always trying to speak to you. So instead of trying to make things happen on your own, sit in stillness. Um, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that said, acknowledge God in all of your ways. So if you got a business, if your health is, is, is off, or if, if something is going on with your animal, if, you know, whatever it is, sit in stillness and receive that inspired action. And boy, that's going to be a powerful, dynamic, universal law for you. Can you see how all of these laws are really given to us to really help us live very powerful lives. All right, um, 
my next law, which where do I want to go next? Okay, the law of expectation. I love that law. So really, when I say the word expectation, that means you're looking for something. Remember that energy always follows our thoughts. And, and when you expect, well, things, things don't ever work out for me, Constance, or, you know, people, it's too good to be true. If that's what you expect, then that's what's going to happen for you. But when you begin to expect for good things, Ernest Holmes said that my, your good shall find you wherever you go. So if you expect to have a good day, if you expect for good things to happen, if you expect, well, you know, this is, this is not too good to be true. This is not too wonderful to last forever. You know, if you begin to expect by saying, isn't it wonderful that things always work out for me? It is so wonderful that I always have all of the, the money that I need for, for my bills. It's so wonderful that I connect with great people. I was talking to somebody uh, the other day and they were saying, well, you know, I'm mostly, uh, most of my friends are male friends. I said, okay. She said, because, you know, whenever you get a bunch of women together, it's always a lot of drama. And I said to her, that has not been my experience. And she just looked at me and I said to her, if that's what you believe and if that's what you expect, the Bible says your expectation would not be cut off from you. So because she expected that, I said, that has not been my experience. And uh, she said, uh, she said, that's never happened to you. I said, I didn't say it's never happened to me, but because I'm in the vibration of expecting good friendship, expecting mutual reciprocal relationships, your expectation is a form of faith. Everybody got that? It's a form of faith. A and so you are really creating your own reality by your expectations. And the example that you've heard me use before, if I put in an order to um, Amazon and my house is on the corner, so when the Amazon truck comes, I put my order in. Wow, I'm looking, but it may go by. Why? Because I'm expecting for my package to arrive. And sometimes uh, I'll say to the driver, thank you so much. I've been, I've been expecting this. And so tap into the law of expectation every single day and expect for good to show up in your life. You are God in your life. You create your own reality. And, and whatever you expect is what's going to happen. All right, let me talk about another law, the law of intention. You know, I love this law. Oprah Winfrey says intention rules the world. Intention is so powerful. Uh, uh, you know, whatever you intend to do, I love that word. It's all about focus. It's all about what you're looking at. It's all about where all of your energy is going. You know, we heard on the great move of the secret, wherever attention goes, energy flows. And so when you, when you set an intention, or as I said at the beginning, when you write down your goal, you're really saying to the universe, this is who I am, and this is what I desire. Remember Gabriel and Kali from last week? He said, I am a blissfully ha a, a married man, and I have a blissful marriage. He was very intentional about that with his thinking, with his emotions, uh, and uh, so we know in the 3D world, when you set your intention, you have to be laser focused. Uh, athletes call it being in the zone. You're so focused, kind of like Steph Care Curry. I mean, <laughs> they say he's the greatest three shooter ever. I mean, if you ever watch that man, when he gets in the zone, 
it is amazing. He doesn't miss. So he is very, very intentional, you know, about what he wants. So you, you really place your order uh, uh, to the cosmic universe. You know, the Bible says ask. And that word ask is to realize that all things are yours. Ask and you shall receive. And so when you're asking, you're setting your intention. And we use the law of intention all the time. We'll say, oh, I'm going to bed early because in the morning I'm going to get up. I intend to get up and walk early because it's so hot. What is that? intention. So how intentional are you? What would happen in your life if you were just so intentional uh, about who you are, what you deserve, etc.? Even athletes, you know, boxers, uh, they move away from home, I understand. And they're just so focused in and intentional on winning that fight. Well, one of my former mentors, Marcia Weeder, she was known as America's dream coach. And I remember she just like, I want to be on Oprah. I want to be on Oprah. And she was very intentional about, I really want, she wanted to be on Oprah because she wanted a global audience uh, this before this was before podcasts were so big. She wanted a global audience where she could teach people how to live their dreams because she was just so tired of people not being intentional. So she would tell everybody, I'm a dream coach and I want to be on a global network. And you know, I take that back. She she wasn't saying I want to be on Oprah, but she did want a global stage. Okay, I'm getting the story right, y'all. And so long story short, um, so she would tell her friends, tell people she ran into. So one, an associate of hers was in a meeting that had nothing to do with her. And I guess it was other producers. Or, and somebody said in the meeting, you know, Oprah looking for someone who can teach about dreaming or how to make your dreams come true. And of course, the rest is history. What happened there? She set her intention. So this law of intention is so powerful. Don't, don't just get up every day and just, just not be intentional. Sometimes I'll type up a list. This is what I want to accomplish today. This is how much water I'm going to drink today. This is, this is how much I'm going to walk today, et cetera. So we're talking about these dynamic laws of the universe for manifestation. So the law of intention. Let's see, where do I want to go next? Uh, well, let's go with the law of gratitude. That is so big. And you guys have heard me talk about gratitude, but we know it is a spiritual force. And... Um, you can prepave your life with your gratitude. And the Bible says rejoice. And, and again, I say rejoice. And when you are grateful for what you do have, grateful for what's on this way, it, 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 it's like a hurricane that begins to pull stuff to you. We already know the stats on when you are grateful for just 10 minutes a day, that it increases your immune system because it makes you aware of, I already have that. You see yourself as already having it and you, you're not praying for it, you're thanking God for it. And, and so Thanksgiving, when you are grateful and you're thankful, and you are appreciative in advance, I believe that it begins to effortlessly bring stuff into form. And, and, you know, when you have a desire, whatever your desire was that I asked you to write down at the beginning of the show, and in your mind, you begin to, like I said, become pregnant with it, your heart becomes aligned. 
And sometimes in the morning, I'll just say, thank you, Father. Thank you, God. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Even when things have not worked out for me, because I used to be such a pouty little spoiled brat. And, and, and when you have attitude and you're pouting and you're mad and you're complaining, you remain. Because God has really given you his royal rule and reign. And so every day, uh, and, and, and my days are not perfect. You know, sometimes things, you know, kind of get to me. I allow them. And I just said, nope, girlfriend, you need to get in there. Be grateful. Look at your life. Thank you for my life. Thank you. And you begin to get in that vibration of gratitude. It That law is one of the most powerful laws ever. If you're standing in a long line at the airport, thank you, God, that I have money to go on this trip. Uh, thank you that it's going to be a wonderful trip. So you prepave your life in advance with gratitude, thanksgiving, and appreciation. What would happen in your life by the end of 2023, if you tapped into this dynamic law of manifestation with gratitude. Wow. You know, I, I just love it. And, and, and so they're saying now that, you know, when you're grateful and live in that vibration, you know, that it heals trauma. It takes you out of the victim mentality. And, and, and it's really all about focus. I love it. All right, this is so good. Uh, let me talk about the law of giving and receiving. This is a major law and uh, it's a universal law. And I think it was Einstein called it the boomerang effect. And you're not given to get but when you do give, it puts you in that vibration uh, 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 or flow of money. So I'm getting ready to tell you all my business now. So, you know, um, somebody said, Constance, we got some um, sweets to see Beyonce. I said, okay. And, you know, if you're in a suite, you know, we talking money. But you know what I decided to do? And I'm just being honest and vulnerable with y'all. I said, I love it. Beyonce is a bad girl. But I decided to give or plan into my mentor, Bishop Victor Yuzosiki from Africa. He's been here in the U.S. And I didn't plan to get something from him. I felt led to do that. So I don't know how that will come back to me, but it will simply because I got in the vibe. That giving put me in the vibration of giving and receiving. I'm not looking to him. It may not even come back in the form of money. But if you go outside, a lot of people have gardens outside. If you go outside and you plant a tomato plant, you plant a seed and you water it and then, you know, the sun shines on it, something is going to happen. So when you give, some of you all need to, uh, all those clothes you haven't worn, all of those pots and pans, ladies, and and three sets of dishes and shoes. I got some shoes now that I'm going to take to the Goodwill. And that just puts you in the cycle of, of, of giving and receiving. Open up your heart to receive. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And we're just not talking about money. Uh, what I mentioned earlier about the lady who she thought she was going to fight with me over a parking space. And I said to her, girlfriend, my life is so blessed. A parking space doesn't mean anything to me. 
So what did I do? I, I gave her grace. Some of y'all need to give your own self grace. So that whole law of giving and receiving, give people, forgive people, release people, let people be who they are. And so when you give and receive grace, mercy, compassion, money, patience, a listening ear, it's a powerful, dynamic, universal law, and it has to come back to you. Oh, man, how much time do I have left? So um, I think I'm going to talk about one more. I'm not going to get to all of them. But can you see how if you would just begin to practice one of these laws, not to mention two, three, four, or five, you would literally transform your life at the before the end of the year. So another law is a law of perpetual transmutation of energy. What does that mean? That just remember that just simply means that you need to remember that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can be rearranged. Everything is energy. And so we know that even your thoughts and your emotions are energetic. Your words are energetic. And so we know that energy is an equivalent of mass times the speed of light squared. And so when you want something to change, we're talking about changing uh, how, how our thoughts and our emotions and our words shift and change. So when you just begin to change your emotional state, your emotions, almost immediately, every atom on earth receives that change at the same time. And there begins to be a change in your physical state. OMG. Scientists say that when you just begin to change the energy of your thinking, of your thoughts, instead of thinking something bad, you know, this is going to be a difficult day, it's hot, hot outside. But if you just begin to begin to think and change the energy of your thoughts, you know, good things always work out for me. Isn't it wonderful how things work out for me? And you just begin to feel that energy on the inside. You begin to think and feel unlimited supply and everything that I need is coming to me now. And so a change of energy, a change of your thinking, a change of your emotion is what? It's transmuted into energy and you become a vibrational match for what you desire. When you have a, speaking of desires, when you have a burning desire for that six bedroom home or a burning desire, burning is like an emotion. You see what I'm saying? So when you have a burning desire and it's emotional, it transmutes into material objects. OMG, so can you see how powerful you are? So all riches begins with an emotional uh, state, uh, a, a shift of energy or a mood change. Y'all know your moods attract. One, one person told me, I'm, I'm, I'm moody. I said, well, you know, that's fine as long as it's a good mood. So, so I would say the emotion is what people really need to attract because that emotion or that thought transmutes to its counterpart. OMG, so you intentionally begin to live in a state of abundance. That's a state of mind that's going to transmute or be changed to its counterpart. So what mood are you in? W what are your emotions? We're talking about energy being transmuted, uh, you know, into, into whatever you, you put your attention on. 
these this is so good guys these are universal laws so so instead of being a uh, moody or mad or sad and you're talking to or you're listening to a woman who used to be that way instead of being that way intentionally as i said earlier earlier choose and begin to feel and get in the energy of success in your heart um you know somebody says one atom has the ability to wipe out large cities. That's how powerful you are. This tiny atom is so powerful. And when you just begin to shift your thinking just a little bit, all of the atoms all over the world begin to shift and change and it puts you in a vibrational match. So I think those are the only laws that I'm gonna be able to get to today. So, so everybody, do you see how powerful you are? You know, at the beginning, I just talked about the structure of the universe. You need to understand that. But do you see you in charge? You can choose the law of divine oneness. You can choose the law of expectation or the law of inspired action. You can choose to tap into that dynamic law of intention and focus. You can choose to tap into the law of giving and receiving of gratitude. And lastly, the law of perpetual transmutation of energy. This is so good. If I were you, I would listen to this over and over and over and over again. And I would write out the laws and then I would ask the spirit to help me to implement and to flow in these powerful laws. Well, everybody, it's been so wonderful to um, come into your, your ears, <laughs> however you listen to, into your home, into your car. Uh, as you're running, as you're cleaning, as you're driving, and um, just every week bringing you just in a spirit of excellence, my very best. Make a decision to create a powerful week, and God bless you.